<coughs> we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. In about 18 months ago, um, I started a fabrication. I have been doing um, fabrication for other artists and a number of other <clears throat> things for many years since graduate school, but uh, I got the opportunity to uh, start a business, Indianapolis Fabrications, which is uh, down on 10th and um, Massachusetts. Um, when we uh, were asked through a number of circumstances to build something for the 100 Acres Park. And, um, and that was a, a very good day. <laughs> and and I, I probably didn't realize it at the time, but on, on a number of occasions, I've tried to start my own fabrication business with some seriousness. As you might know, that uh, making a living as an artist is uh, not something that you always get opportunities for, and I felt like as long as I could make things, and even make things for other artists or movies or whatever, that at least I would have my hands in um, the cr creative um, spectrum. Um, I I've tried a number of times to start something successfully and, and failed um, just in keeping it operating, but um, the new, the new business and my business partner, Randy Domic, who's already been pointed out, um, we've, I think, managed to make something that has this, uh, potential for being sustainable. And, uh, and I think between us and between the talented people that we've managed to attract to the company, um, I, I kid you not, we can make anything. Um, certainly, probably the person I need to thank most after Angus. Thank you for helping. That's an awesome drawing. Another awesome drawing. Um, is my wife Donna Sink. Uh, you may know if, you've, uh, if you're a friend, and I see a lot of friends. Um, I've been thinking, you know, I, a few years ago I think Donna uh, commented to me that um, she doesn't see her influence in my work, especially when I'm somebody who looks to the environment around me to make my work. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, that might not sit so well with a wife. Um, but uh, I, I look at what um, she uh, gently encouraged me to get married. <laughs> gently encouraged me to have a child and gently encouraged me to move to Indiana. Uh, and without any one of those events happening, I don't know that I would be here right now. So, thank you. All right. So we do a lot of things at Indianapolis Fabrications. Uh, our artwork, we do limited uh, edition design work, uh, uh, limited production work for, this is a Felicia Ferrone chandelier called Loom. Um, and it's an LED chandelier that, uh, that is a mobile as well. Very difficult. Everything from that to actually building uh, vintage or custom automobiles. And this, this meteor you may recognize from the... Um, we, uh, we did the um, final paint and restoration at the, uh, at the shop. And the first use of it was for the photographs that, that ended up in the museum. All right, on to the work. Um, I don't often collaborate, um, but this was a collaboration with a friend, uh, Abby Donovan, who I went to graduate school with. Uh, and I thought it would serve as a good starting point for describing my work, draw a deep breath, look again. Um, as I just said, I, I look around me to sort of evaluate my, my life and my work. And, uh, and so uh, this 
also was around the time that we started drawing space imagery. Um, and I thought this would be a good place to start and get, uh, give you a sense of, of that. I, I, I dig back a little bit, not hopefully to, um, certainly there's more skeletons in the closet, but um, this work um, precedes the type of work that I'm doing and have been doing maybe for the last 10 years. Um, and these, uh, in describing to you how I look to the environment around me and, and make connections uh, and make work, um, this piece is called Head Cold. And at the time, uh, I was learning to play bagpipes, which I did professionally in Philadelphia for a few years. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not normal. I, you may know that already. Um, but, uh, but then to like, really use materials and, and begin to pull things out of them, this, this is actually cast bronze. I was running a foundry at the time. Uh, and the finish you see on it is actually a resin and nail polish. Uh, so it has this very uh, repulsive uh, quality while being made of things that are meant to be adornment or beauty. Uh, this was another from the series. So, so at the time, I was still use, utilizing automotive finishes and metalworking, plastics, molding and casting. Uh, those are things I feel like I do uh, quite well. Um, and uh, in this series, was I was trying to br bring visual image to types of sounds I would think about. So this piece is called Buddha, and uh, it was loosely based on Tibetan chants. Um, and uh, but I, I did this at the Bemis Center for Contemporary Art in Omaha. And uh, getting a chance to do those residencies is a great opportunity for any artist. Uh, it gives you time away um, from uh, daily constraints of going to a job, dealing with family, any of those, any of the things that, that weigh very heavily on, on uh, someone who wants to spend their time acting like a child. Um, and, uh, and while I was there, it was the Midwest. I, I hadn't been back to the Midwest in a long time. I grew up in northern Michigan. Um, but the Bemis um, was right smack out there, not far from the geographic center of the contiguous United States. And, um, and so, you know, I was looking at Hot Rod magazines and, you know, trying to apply that to art and thought, it's time to embrace that a little more. Um, but again, to, to give you some context in terms of what this is, both it's a, a, a full-size uh, um, exhaust system for a V8 car. Um, but the Bemis is housed in a building that used to be a um, um, meat processing and packing plant. And there were still, um, this is silver food wrap from, left from that. Uh, so it's toilet paper tubes, steel, and, and uh, silver food wrap um, that make it up. So there's, there's a nice connection between digestive and, and exhaust and flatulence and... Uh, the toilet paper is the smoke that you see there in the background. The, um, uh, this, this piece is called Stud, another piece I did um, there. It's a, it's a two by four, um, but it is um, made with a, a particular kind of auto paint that it has a, a dimensional quality about it. I, I, so, um, and then this, this image has become kind of an icon for, for my work in terms of uh, looking at something and applying ideas to it, uh, mashing things together, um, which, uh, and trying to find new new resonances from. I also I do a lot of things, not just make sculpture, but I uh, I'm, I, I'm, I photograph. I, uh, I I love to make photographs. I, I have since I was in undergraduate school, and I discovered uh, by accident that I when I go to new places, I tend to look through the camera first. Uh, to get my bearings. Um, and this piece was done at, at the Bemis after uh, three months of brutally hot weather. Um, and uh, I was introduced to one of four or five people in the community that still had a lush lawn. Um, in the hubris of keeping that in the m male, um, all the work that I did at the Bemis started to also look at male identity. Uh, keep my, you know, my my father wanted to have a, the best lawn in the neighborhood. Um, so I began to look at these things that both were outward projections of the male persona and, um, 
and sort of had a certain amount of hubris to them. This is an eight foot by eight foot photograph, um, and, uh, and it, it photographed with a large format camera, so very, very high in detail. Um, I, uh, I started to get some opportunities, um, being offered some opportunities, which I think is something that I really enjoy doing and, and I think is reflected here, especially being based in Indianapolis and I've had a few years, a couple of years to really think, think about the space and be intimate with the environment of the community here. Um, but it's something I, I think I, I like to do and I, I'm just kind of discovering that now, but uh, I got the great fortune to be asked by the curator at the Goethe Institute in New York uh, during document 10 or 11 don't remember which, I'm sorry, uh, to do something uh, for, the, for the New York um, galleries. And I got the opportunity to go to Germany, and when I was there, you know, I, I had uh, one, you know, I'd, coming from the Bemis, this is the same photographic material that you see behind him, so there, there's also a thread. I often try to follow a thread of ideas when I make things. Um, when I was in Germany, I realized that uh, terrible garden ornamentation is not limited to the United States. <clears throat> but I also found, like, there's a rich history there of, um, of these gnomes and the types of gnomes and what they do. Uh, and Castle, it turns out, is in the region where the Grimm brothers collected all their folklore. And so it became very obvious to me that I, I wanted to do some sort of garden ornament, especially knowing that it was on Fifth Avenue. Um, I wanted to put a garden, garden gnome out on Fifth Avenue, which, which didn't go over well with the Fifth Avenue um, uh, society uh, visit, or home owners. I, um, so what, what I ended up doing was smashing them in, uh, in their kiosk. And this particular gnome is called a Heinzel Mansion, and, and they are the types of gnomes that might come out at night and tie your shoes together when you're not, you know, so they, they're troublemakers. So my idea was that he snuck into the kiosk at night and got stuck. Um, and, uh, and this remained um, out there in front of the Met uh, for a number of months. So... Uh, and again, uh, this was my first really large-scale opportunity. I was uh, awarded a... Um, there, there's a sculpture biennial at uh, John Hopkins University at Evergreen House, and I was uh, awarded one of the slots for that. And um, it, it was also an opportunity where uh, I was selected based on pr prior work and then working with a curator um, conceived of a project for the museum. Or, grounds and uh, and so this tiny little fountain is at the end of a giant formal garden that's uh, axial with the house and the and uh, so the curator said you know is there some way you could amp that thing up a little bit it's way too small <laughs> um, and again looking at the environment um, there are a number of things that the, the thing that Evergreen House is most known for is their uh, collection of uh, original architecture documents. Um, and so, and, and the other thing that they're notable for is um, one of the, the original owners of the home was a patron, patron of the theatrical arts and in the home was a, was a theater um, that, uh, um, that brought artists from Europe in the early 1900s to the United States to um, make um, productions in her home. It was also the 19, early 1900s is when the first time uh, ornamental architecture was being made for the masses or the proletariat here in the United States in the form of theater houses. So uh, there was a lot of in, inside and outside. All the molding details came from the inside of the library. The anthemians that are on top, they actually had were on the front facade of the house museum, uh, and they had one in their collection. They allowed me to uh, mold and cast it, um, and then uh, this is axial, axial with with that with that library. So, a lot of connections um, there. Uh, I I do some video work, not not often, but I I do, and uh, this this piece is called Burnout. I'm not sure if I have a. I think I have a detail. 
And, and here I'm definitely starting to embrace the car culture a, a little more. Um, the uh, one, th a number of opportunities I just imagined for myself. Um, uh, there was a sculpture park in um, upstate New York, Art Oh My, I've always wanted to do that residency, haven't been able to get it. Um, but uh, this is something I conceived um, for that, though I built it more on a Western theme. Um, but the title of this piece is called Blue Whale, and I, I imagined a blue whale lost in the woods, full size, largest mammal. Um, and this is all molded in clay, modeled, uh, cast in uh, urethane plastic, and then the, the scenic stuff I did uh, based on stuff I read about um, railroad, um, HO railroad model construction. Um, Opportunities are really great. This is another one I had at the University of Wisconsin. I was invited to spend a week in Green Bay um, as a visiting artist, and they asked me if I would like to make something while I was there and work in the student um, shops and give a lecture. Uh, I was certainly thrilled to do it because they were paying me. Um, and uh, but what I but what I quickly realized is that Green Bay and Traverse City, where I grew up, are on the they're very close to the same parallel. And the weather there is very similar. Um, and, uh, the, you know, I wanted to create something that reminded me of my childhood. Um, this, the, the, uh, the essence of being cold in, in, um, and, 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 uh, and enjoying that. Um, so I uh, reproduced um, a flexible flyer sled in acrylic and sandblasted it so it was translucent. And I also made the ice tray type lighting system um, to make, give it a real blue glow. There's a lot of work like the whale that we all do that never really sees the light of day. So I thought I ought to do a series of work I'll call wishful thinking. And I guess I had, I've gotten some of my wish here. Um, but this is a series of works where I went, uh, I, when I was living on the East Coast, I would spend a fair amount of time going to galleries in New York and, of course, dream of the day that I might get an exhibition there. And so what I decided to do was photograph these galleries and then remove the artwork from the walls and put my own work, artwork in. <laughs> so this, this is actually a video uh, installation that has never been exhibited anywhere. And, uh, and if you look at the floor, those are Cy Twombly paintings in the reflection. <laughs> this is at Gagosian Gallery in New York. Um, so this is, this is an ongoing project for me. <clears throat> so we moved to Indianapolis, and uh, I, happily I, I had a number of opportunities uh, after I arrived. One of the first being uh, a Massachusetts Avenue uh, installation was a... Um, a two-year temporary artwork uh, that had a small honorarium that I applied for and got, and, and certainly was a very nice opportunity for me to meet Mindy Taylor Ross, who um, it was the director of um, um, public art for the Arts Council, uh, who then introduced me to Lisa. Um, and I think, you know, uh, the Ephraimson came not long after this. so. Things began to happen, but this moving here from inner city Philadelphia, um, I was the nature sort of was a new. I was uh, given a new uh, connection to having a backyard and actually seeing um, animals in it, and um, and uh, the cardinal was a state bird, and I began to. And I still had the, you know, pursuing the interesting thing about maleness. And uh, in doing research, the male cardinal uh, is very territorial and would never congregate like this. Um, this was a very weird space in the city. You can see in the background I-70 goes through. So Massachusetts Avenue was, was altered here to accommodate the freeway. So it was a bizarre green space there. Um, so I was, and, and I scaled the birds Lar a little larger than life size. This modeled in clay, cast in urethane plastic, and painted with automotive paints. Um, so I tried to very subtly change 
or present something that was not quite right in a situation that I guess I thought was unusual and not quite right. And I, I said um, before that uh, when we first moved to Indianapolis, we lived in uh, an apartment while we uh, searched for a house and sort of got our footings. Uh, and so my studio was really my camera bag. I didn't have anywhere else to work. And I began to take photographs of large equipment, you know, like what could be more boyish and manly than this. And there was a lot of uh, construction going on at the time. Um, and uh, and I, I learned a number of things, uh, like the high clay content in the, in the um, dirt I ended up using for another sculpture. I'm not sure if I put it in here or not. Um, but I started to make some large format photographs, large scale, of these heavy equipment, trying to, with that same kind of hubris and large printing, um, and, uh, and again was given another opportunity at the White River State Park to uh, do a sculpture, another temporary work that was both uh, funded by an honorarium at the White River and also supplemented by the Ephraimson Fund. Uh, and this project I made entirely in our two-car garage with one 110 electrical outlet. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me about eight months. So the, uh, I, I'm cast the, these are cast in plastic. Uh, this is all metal fabrication. And uh, it was delivered on site in four pickup. Each it comes apart in four pieces. It fits in four pickup truck beds. Um, Lisa mentioned that I was in the Glasgow International, and this is the project I sent. I it was a kind of la last minute um, invitation, and uh, so I reused the cardinals in that. And again, thinking about wanting to be in Scotland and also being an American, a Midwestern American to boot. Um, that uh, that it would be amusing um, to be to send cardinals to Scotland. They don't have cardinals in Scotland, and to have them lost. So th this is a roundabout sign, which confuses many people. I know we're getting some more in Carmel, but typically roundabout uh, is a, a little confusing for an American. So, and then there's a play, sort of a play on gravity and whether they could really be there and and. So they're, they're being very American in, in Edinburgh, or uh, Glasgow. All right. This is my uncle, Ken Sterling, and that's Angus. And these are parts for the meteor. <laughs> One thing I wanted to talk about uh, that, I, that has really influenced the, uh, the work that's in the galleries is uh, this idea of legacy. And... Uh, and being able to pass on, you know, I, I, I worked uh, with my, the, the way I could see my uncle who, uh, who supported me as a teenager in a, in a unique way, um, the only way I would find him would be in the garage. And so, um, and I think that is probably pretty common for a lot of people, whether, whether it might be your mother at the sewing machine like Donna's mom, or, um, you know, like we find the time to work together and to sort of pass on these identities. Um, and uh, though I'm grateful, I think now, that this was, um, this project, which is the Legacy 500 project, was uh, um, not um, fulfilled because the, uh, the museum had the amazing opportunity to curate the U.S. Pavilion at the Venice Biennial, um, but this was, I was slated actually to have both the Ephraimson Pavilion and the Forefront Galleries at the same time, at least we were discussing it, and uh, this is the project, I came up with it, and it, for that, and it was for the running of the, this year's 100th anniversary of the Indianapolis 500, and what I was going to do was build a 1950s garage in the, in the Ephraimson Pavilion, and then build a hot rod race car uh, during the run of the exhibition. Um, using uh, um, the interior that you see there is based on the Speedway Museum um, gasoline alley garages at the time, and up until the mid-50s, uh, somebody could build a, a race car in their garage and bring it to Indy and run. Um, and so that, that do-it-yourself attitude and that, that, again, that plays into the things that I'm interested in, the, the hubris of it, the 
the the risk taking of it and um, and 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 the commitment to it, which which there are great commitments being uh, made. Uh, the, I this uh, because of some other funding I had, this afforded me an opportunity to work with a. a um, Gary Campisi, who's based in Ohio, he uh, he illustrated the idea for me, and it's it's a hot rod based on a 1927 uh, Ford Model T that's been mashed with A.J. Foyt's uh, very famous 1967 Coyote race car, and uh, I it seemed like this would lend a great opportunity. I don't think anybody in the museum had worked as an artist in residence. Um, it would have allowed for cross uh, institutional advertising or you know and it it uh, seemed like it had great potential and I would have gotten to build a car. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Here's another rendering of it. So you might get the impression that I love making stuff. Um, I made this thing somehow. <laughs> Um, but I, 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 again, I look at the things around me to um, evaluate my life and how I think about things, and I think that's one thing an artist is, that's a definition of an artist, really, somebody who's in constant evaluation about, about everything that's going on around them, being aware. Um, so one thing that I had been doing with my students was giving them uh, a project that I call Half Scale Alter Ego Marionettes. And it's a figure modeling project. And I, I felt, you know, often I give project and think, that would be good for me. Or maybe I should show that I'm capable. Um, but then there's the challenge of I don't, I figure model a fair amount for other people, or at least historically I had, but I'd never really taken on a real figure, figurative project for myself. And so, yeah, I. I said, oh yeah, I can do that. And so I felt like my half-scale alter ego was right there. Um, so I may, I, this was the initial photograph for the sculpture. The sculpture is upstairs in the, in the museum. So I started on this when Angus was much younger, as you can see. Um, and uh, so here we are. And, and this, I think, epitomizes, you'll see in a number of photos. Um, and from the, from the preview, um, in order to do my work, I didn't want to abandon my ability to be a good parent, um, but I also wanted to stay engaged with doing it. So um, I finally got the opportunity to complete this sculpture at the at Sculpture Space in Utica, New York. Uh, so I, I thank them for their funding and their generosity, along again with the Ephraimson Fund, which uh, supported me in this in this residency. I spent two months in Utica. This was almost the only thing that I did there. I did a number of, a few other things, but the work that I do often is very, very labor intensive um, and allows for a certain amount of um, ability for me to lose myself, like I'm doing now. I'm running way, way over. Um, is it? <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to hurry then. Um, all model and clay. My handprints. Um, in, inside of it is a steel armature, foam, rubber mold. So that's what a rubber mold looks like without the mother mold. Put the mother mold on. That's without the clay in it anymore. And that's a rotocast, cast urethane plastic head, um, fitting the glass eyes into primer, and that's an automotive primer. I got the opportunity to go to Golden. Uh, it was nearby, and they uh, taught me how to use an airbrush and showed me how to use their products. Uh, so that's, that's after. Um, putting it together. There he is in here. And again, these opportunities, you get, you have an idea, you want to go do something, you can engage the community. Uh, I found a woman who makes wigs for cancer patients in Utica. Uh, and she helped me wig the sculpture. Um, it's just the series of work in the, in the first gallery are some things that I, I play, I, I began to play with, uh, with images of myself. Um, 
I actually, Lisa brought to my attention that it was very similar, some shadow photographs and then a painting based on those, an auto paint that I did uh, several years ago. Um, but these, uh, I, allow, I, I embraced a means of playful uh, use of material that I didn't necessarily see have an end result, uh, something that I feel like I try to instill in my students. Um, and then as I did it, I, I realized that they held a more psychological significance uh, and, and began to do it in earnest. So I tried to bring out things that maybe made me uncomfortable about myself or um, highlight traits. I use humor in my work. Hey, Dad. Hey, Angus. What kind of um, baseball game do they play in space? What kind of baseball game do they play in space? An all-star game. Oh, you got me. <laughs> <clears throat> so, the the exhibition is about imagination and uh, and and entering that. And you do as an artist, you enter that imagination, uh, and it cons can consume you. And um, and it it's playful and it's fun and it's childlike, and all these things. Um, are things that I think are very uh, connected to being an artist. Um, and then again, we, the, the playfulness of the rocket, rocketeering, thinking about space, the ideas of aspiration, um, they all are mashed together in the exhibition that you see upstairs. Uh, the flight path is where you start. Um, this is the only image I have because uh, we put it in yesterday. Um, and, uh, and that leads you through the galleries past the transformation of, of me as Angus and Angus as me. Um, we, uh, we looked a lot at space. We, Angus does a lot of drawing. We draw together sometimes. Um, I don't exhibit this work, but I thought it appropriate uh, for this. I had the idea to build a spaceship of race car parts <clears throat> uh, and started to get some parts from Ganassi Racing, uh, but I couldn't find enough to do a whole project. Uh, so because of um, Indianapolis Fabrications and the ability to do these large-scale things uh, and uh, Randy's uh, connection with race, racing, um, we, we were able to fabricate one high style, super fast, um, just the way they built a race car in the 60s. So it's a steel frame and you'll see the cage when you're on it. It's a lot like a roll cage in a race car. It's skinned with aluminum. Um, I meant to make some connections with Bonneville Racing in the Salt Flats, where they have rocket cars and uh, run um, speed uh, records. Um, that's in the paint booth. I just thought it was cool. Uh, there are a lot of details, even to the point of painting a thin stripe on the rim. Uh, 69 or 59 Cadillac taillights, uh, and we made the the bezel for it. Here's the piece going into graphics. So we laid out all the graphics and then I laid out the, the, the scallop design. Uh, we made the chairs. Um, and the cool thing about the chairs that I'll point out um, is that uh, in order to make them look like fabric, uh, we found an anodizing process where they actually print anodizing dyes with a large inkjet printer and then they so you can sublimate it onto the aluminum and then anodize it. So when you look at the when you look at the chairs upstairs, that that they look like fabric, but they're they're aluminum. There it is coming out of the anodizing tank. So there's Jim doing final assembly uh, and going into the thing. Uh, Randy has a history of doing um, uh, electronics, and so we managed all the. Uh, the LED construction, uh, I include Angus. He riveted all the panels on the door. Um, and these are the suits that Beth, Beth so amazingly made, and they're in the gallery. Uh, you see from our logos, we, uh, here's Angus in his suit designing the, designing the logo. I actually used one of his drawings from several years ago to draw it myself, but this is the sort of environment that we live in. Oh, I, you know, I, ungraciously didn't thank um, uh, Adam Buente and um, Kyle Perry for uh, their who operate project one they uh, they did this the modeling and CNC for, uh, form of the space helmet which I made and this is the rubber mold you can see the rubber piece there these are the rotocasts that come out um, 
this is Heather. She's uh, she's helping fit the uh, the pieces for the helmet. That's the neck. I welded up. I vacuum formed the uh, the the visors at the uh, Art Institute of Chicago, uh, and here they are in assembly, paint, and then in use. Maybe uh, I should wrap it up here. There's a lot more I could talk about, but I I, I think I'm wearing out my welcome here. Um, I want you to have an idea. So Angus is in here. And you'll see inside is a video camera, so uh, the Orbit project that has the video component um, is, uh, is mounted in that, in that and we uh, reenacted that space flight for that project. Um, why don't I, let's just do this, this, I'll end it here. I'm sorry that I put too much in here. Uh, I could talk all night. <laughs> Uh, even though I was very diff it was very difficult to come up here, I, I could definitely talk all night. So this was on the first day of school this year. <laughs> so th this piece is titled "Gone," and uh, and I I hope that both there, there's humor, craft, and there's a certain amount of anxiety or darkness in the work. Um, so I hope that you. You, you gather some of that. I think anybody who's a parent would understand the anxiety. I don't have it so much now that he's eight, but there's that certain anxiety of sending your kid away in this alien environment. And, um, and so some, the, 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 there's a fair amount of humor. Um, there, is, there is some, a little bit of darkness there too, or anxiety. Thank you for your time.